So here is the namesake of Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument down here in Southern Arizona. This is it, the Oregon Pipe Cactus. And this is a gigantic specimen. These guys can get up to 30 feet tall. My guess is this one's probably 25. Um, they can live up to 200 years old and uh, they grow, only grow about two and a half inches a year. So do the math. This is an old dog right here with about two dozen columns coming out of it. Um, this is really the only place in uh, the United States of America you can find this uh, specimen of cactus here in Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. That's a mouthful. Uh, and the reason being is that they do not live uh, when, the, when the frost levels get to around 25 degrees Fahrenheit. And just even just north of where we stand uh, down here in the National Monument, right here on the Mexican border, uh, you won't find them because the temperatures get a little too cold. They, uh, they, they, they grow their first blooms at the, about 35 years into their lives. And their, their blooms are famous because they, they create a fruit. This fruit, so the, the, the blooms uh, create the fruit in about May and June. And the fruit, right before the first rains of the summer... Uh, will finally come into harvest and uh, they, they'll open up and the, the fruit becomes uh, accessible uh, only at night time. The flower opens up at night and these, the, the, these bats will come and uh, eat the fruit and then poop the seeds out all over the desert. And that's how these guys propagate. They have a, a, a distinct relationship with these bats and uh, who are here to who come in and eat them. Um, the natives used to harvest the fruit as well. It was part of their, uh, a big part of their, their diets. And even in Mexico, they're still commercially uh, raised for their fruit. And uh, they're just, they're just a special cactus massive and I'll come close to it so we can check it out these guys didn't show up in the Sonoran Desert till about 4,500 years ago so this is a relatively uh, new kid on the block as they call it and the reason being is about you know 10,000 years ago as the ice age ended and the temperature started to warm up um, finally it was warm enough only 4,500 years ago for these guys to enter the, the ecosystem. And uh, they do not necessarily need a nursery tree. Like they don't need to grow next to a mesquite or Palo Verde or an ironwood. Uh, they, can, they can make it on their own out in the open. Um, they're pretty hardy in that regard. And uh, they can just, they're massive. And you can see this hillside, this is, this part of the park has tons and tons of these. Huge, high concentration of organ pipe cactuses around here. The organ pipe. And this is the bones of the organ pipe cactus. We're here at Quito Bikito Spring. It's, uh, if you can hear that, that's a highway on the, on just across, over on the other side of these trees, and that's Mexico. This is right on the US-Mexico border in the United States. Quito Bikito Springs, home to uh, a, an endemic species of pupfish and a turtle. It's very young turtles. We actually see a bunch of the turtles. 
And one of the worries about this place is that the border wall construction, which is right over there, I mean like literally you could throw a rock over there and hit the, hit the border wall and the wall's gonna get bigger. But one of the worries is that the, they're pumping uh, water uh, for the concrete um, from the aquifer and that if they pump too much, they could drain this spring that's been here for a long time. And I mean, look, there's cottonwoods right out here in the middle of the desert. This, this spring comes from underground and it's probably quite the life source for a lot of animals around here. Keto Bikito Springs. Those are the pupfish. Keto Bikito pupfish. There they are. Little pupfish. Now this is the source of Keto Bikito Springs. Right here, you can even see it just coming right up from out of the mountain. The, the earth is not really a mountain. Kind of concreted this area up a little. Yeah, man, a little channel from that, from the water source up there, all the way down to the big spring. They cemented the whole, the whole thing to preserve as much water as possible, all the way down. Right over there is a road. And that road is in Mexico. We're literally right here on the border. And that those uh, that fence right there is the current border fence. And uh, one and pretty soon here, it's going to be one of those big giant walls. And uh, it's just right here that we walk into Quito Paquito Springs. And for there to be spring welling up from the earth right here in the Sonoran Desert. It's pretty rare and awesome all at the same time. So you can see why people are a little worried with the border wall construction. I mean this is literally we're less than a hundred yards away. There's the little turtles this species is only found here. I can't remember the name, but I'll post it up. Look at those little guys. It's probably about, <laughs> there's a couple dozen. the US Mexico border the brand new walls going up right here in the uh, Oregon pipe national monument not too far from Quito Paquito Springs you can see it going in it's uh, 30 feet what was it Brian 30 feet tall 30 feet? How tall? How tall is it? 30 feet. 30 feet. He ain't jumping that thing. And it goes down into the ground about six feet. One more shot here. The brand new border wall. This is when it happens when you have a broken down global financial system that where multinational companies come into less powerful countries and take all the resources, bankrupt the people so that they have no choice but to leave their homes and go somewhere else. 
this is a result too of you know a drug war that has only uh, has failed and has created this the you know basically real terrorists on the United States border in Mexico with with the cartel members and the cartels who that just wreak devastation and destruction now are more powerful than the Mexican government this is why you got to build walls like this holy cow 30 feet tall hello Mexico the land of the organ pipe like this guy right here there is a very small section of southern Arizona that has what is known as the Sunita cactus and it's the only place in North America in Amer United States uh, where these grow in this one little canyon in Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument and this is this the Sunita cactus and they can get pretty big maybe not as big as uh as the organ pipe but they're large and they have large stands that can have up to over a hundred uh, over a hundred stems they're uh they, they usually are found 1500 feet and lower and I, the reason they don't grow further north than this is and again we're like at the mexican border right i mean literally half a mile where i'm at right now um these don't like the cold just like the organ pipe and they, i think they're even more sensitive they uh this it grows in clusters many stems topped with long flexible gray spines sanita is spanish for old and refers to the similarly of the beard like gray spines to the beard of an old man uh the genus means uh thick wax candle which is interesting and it, the flower blooms for only only one night mainly in the spring in arizona the population's blossom opens about 10 minutes after sunset and the sunita cactus and the the pyrolid moths i hope i'm saying that right have a mutually beneficial relationship about 90 percent of the sunita blossoms are pollinated by female these female uh, moths which what a relationship that is like the organ pipe and the bat the sunita has the same thing with the moth they're awesome this is this is a rare species here for the u.s you'll see them in people's uh gardens in in the phoenix area and tucson areas uh but they're, that's not they're not naturally grown there i mean they can do it but uh, this is an this is au natural right here. Now they as you go south in New Mexico, you, these are much more common. But the only spot here in the U.S. to need a cactus. I'm here in Alamo Canyon. Here in Oregon Pipe National Mo Cactus National Monument, and this has been our favorite trail yet. So lush. We have running water. Hopefully you can hear it in the video. Uh, uh, vibrant riparian ecosystem down here full of birds. And the organ pipes are doing mighty fine up in these uh, canyons. So it must stay nice and warm and nice and moist from these mountains and the rock features up here are something to look at so many little nooks and crannies and caves faces and <laughs> it's like looking at clouds what do you see But the saguaros here are mighty tall. Just an amazing place. This is the Sonoran Desert at its finest. 
down here in south central Arizona on the Mexican border in this very special place called Organ Pipe. When I had done my first uh, interview for Keep Arizona Wild with Lake and Jordal, um, he uh, is a former park ranger for the Organ Pipe Cactus National Monument. And he told me in that interview that, it, that this is the most pristine part of the Sonoran Desert. And uh, I thought that was quite a claim. And now after having spent the weekend here, I can say that I understand where these claims are coming from because it truly is uh, a lush, lush, lush environment full of even extra biodiversity because of these quintessential species right here. Look at that one right there. Holy smokes. And this is the only place in the United States you can find these just gorgeous cactuses. And it's, you know, still the same same uh, species of, of flora and fauna that we see up in the Phoenix area. Uh, but on top of it, we get, we get these guys right here in this one little spot down here on the Mexican border. It gives you a little taste of what the Sonoran Desert in Mexico is like. And uh, just what a place, you know? There's, there are only four deserts uh, here in, in in the United States and uh, the Sonoran is it's the most you know it's the most has the most biodiversity of all of them and uh, it's a real treat and all of them have their beauty but man the Sonoran Desert is a special place we're back here in Alamo Canyon and as you can see, there was uh, a house here. Some people were back here and there was mining operations, small time mining operations and a lot of the mountains around Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. And back in the 1920s, this kind of when it all stopped. Um, you know, and like all industry, there's, there was, a, there was, land degradation that took place and uh you know it's now since a lot of it's been restored thank god so grateful that this land got protected in, in the within the national park services and one of the best parts of the united states is the fact that we we protected a decent amount of the, the most biodiverse places in the country and what a beautiful legacy that is and may we build upon it but we have a history here we have a history in this land that goes even far back further than this this is still even this house right here is Johnny come lately the history of this land is very old and I want to find out about it and share it here on Keep Arizona Wild. Here we are, our indicator species of the Sonoran Desert, the desert ironwood. Check out the video I uploaded like two weeks ago for the Arizona tree profiles. I uh, did the, covered the desert ironwood and everything you need to know about it. Just check it out man one of the uh, one of the all-time greats of the Sonoran Desert right here the silvery barked desert ironwood here it is Oregon pipe man it's this has been one of my favorite trips I've ever had here in Arizona such a beautiful place and it's it's a place where the natural the natural world meets the human political world here on the Mexican border. 
with the United States and as the wall is being constructed here, um, right here in the National Park. Um, and, you know, it's just a balance of understanding what, how this, we're in this situation to begin with and what the true source of the issues are and also trying to keep level heads so that we don't you know inflict more environmental damage to the lands uh, around us um i think there's a middle ground that can be reached because uh you know the there are the dangers are real when we're talking about the what's going on with the cartels in mexico and uh you know the failed drug war here in the united states that in many ways gave birth to these cartels um you know hopefully we could come up with solutions fast so one day we don't even need those walls but in the meantime this is this is the reality of it uh and so we move forward eh and uh, i think the key is just make sure that no more of this has to be torn down and have walls built on it. Let's make sure that we protect the rest of it. What a place, you can see it all around me. Organ pipe, cactus, national monument, what a trip this has been. Eye-opening experience to just understand how close this place is to, you know, the front line of the geopolitical world that we live in. Um, it's just a trip. I don't even take sides on any of it. Just almost watching it as an observer and, um, you know, again, wanting the best for all human beings and all other living beings on the planet. So we keep, we, we preserve this uh, land that we live on for future generations. All right, I'm signing off here. There it is. What a stopping point. The organ pipe and the mighty saguaro. This is the Sonoran Desert at its finest, folks. Bam.